Happy New Fear, everyone. Happy New Fear. Happy New Fear, Boris. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be back in the year 2022 for our new season 13. <laughs> A lucky number if I've ever heard one. Right, Boris? <laughs> yes, indeed. Well, my dear fiends, tonight we have a most wonderfully weird and strange film for you tonight. <laughs> it's called The Bells, also known as The Bell from Hell, starring Vivica Linfors and Renaud Verley. It's a Spanish French film made in 1973. <laughs> and indeed, it is a strange and weird film. It has a bit of Poe uh, aspects to it. Edgar Allan, that is. <laughs> and I have to warn you, Tonight's feature has some animal slaughter scenes that just might make you a little bit uh, hesitant or queasy. In fact, it just might make you uh, think twice about that hamburger or steak that you may have next. <laughs> right, Boris? Uh, Boris doesn't really care whether it's raw or dead or what have you. He, he'll eat it anyway, won't you, Boris? <laughs> so, my dear fiends, let us go right over here to the old haunted internet keyboard. Excuse me one second. My voice is going. Mmm. Delicious Gostini in a mug with my likeness on it. <laughs> anyway. The Bells, also known as the Bell from Hell. Vivica Linfors, that's right. 1973. 74, that type of era. All right, let's go to the internet haunted TV. I know you missed it. Now we're back for a whole new year of seasons, 13 fears and chills and thrills. <laughs> Did your mama tell you not to turn on the TV at night? Oh, <laughs>
Come in. Well, my boy, your case is coming up in two months. Here is the summons. If you suspect it, we are letting you out on a kind of probation. You're absolutely right. Your aunt and I hope that you can conduct yourself normally. Hmm. Wait a minute. Don't forget to report back here every eight days.
The wild fig trees have been uprooted from the graves. The blood of a toad and the bone snatched from the mouth of a bitch in heat are waiting. The dead will rise. The owl hooted three times when your parents secretly copulated to conceive you. I thought that you were far away. Why have you come back? They made me. I told you when you were only a child that you'd be unlucky. Already, fate has dealt the cards. But I'll play them.
Why do you want to leave? I've learned enough. I didn't know you were back. Staying for a while? Yes. I got married. I'm glad you're well again. I quite understand that you wanted to go home to your mother's house. Only I... I would have preferred to have you here. Twenty miles is a long way, and uh, I know that you would never phone. Do you want your tea with milk or lemon? With lemon? Won't you let me help you? There's no need. I'll be ready in a moment. Would you please open the door? Okay. Does Mrs. Avero live here? She's my aunt. If it's the builder, keep him company while I finish here. Would he also like some tea? No. He says he would. She would be upset if you didn't accept. Have you met my aunt? Uh, no, no. So you don't know. What? She was confined to a nursing home. Now she insists on living alone. <coughs> Are you cold? I'd love to close that door, but I daren't. No. Why not? A few years ago, her three daughters went out of that door to go fishing. There was a very heavy fog. The boat was lost at sea or smashed against some rocks. They never came back. Marta went mad.
and the shock paralyzed her. She thinks her daughters will come back at any time, and that they will come back singing, as they used to. Whenever there's a fog, she prepares tea for them. That's why I can't close that door. You understand, don't you? Yes, I think I do. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. I get clumps here all the time. This um, handsome young man is my nephew. Uh, we've already met. You didn't bring another cup. The chemist from Juarez sent Oh, yes. He uh, told me you were planning to have some construction done. My roof needs to be repaired, and uh, so does the front. My friend spoke very highly of you. Did you hear that? What? It was probably nothing. My daughters have gone out fishing on the sea. They shouldn't be long now. Does the door bother you? Shall I close it? Oh, I met that bearded beggar the other day. He recognized me. Hmm. He said the dead would rise. Well, of and... course the dead will arise <coughs> to be judged. Death is simply a transition. Don't you agree? Mm. <laughs> there they are at last. Wipe your feet. What did you tell the poor man? He's here. He's come back. So I see. You're much thinner. Must have frightened him with one of your practical jokes. I can see you haven't changed. Mm -hmm. Much taller and much sadder. He's just the same. Take your foot off the sofa, Esther. What did they do to you in the clinic those three years? Did they cure you? Yes. Now I'm completely mad. I believe you. Hello. How's Mr. Supermarket? I prefer that you call your cousin's fiancé by his name. Do you know she's almost pregnant now? Really? When they get married, they'll have two more supermarkets. <laughs> Twins. Do you mind if I tell you I'm not exactly overjoyed to see you? Why have you come? My case comes up the 15th. And... Maria, your tea. I want you to know that I haven't changed. And I'll do anything I can not to have you squander my sister's money. I thought we might meet in my house it first. It won't be to your house for long. She'll never forgive you for that night. Shut up. When you didn't finish raping... Shut up! Stop it! You didn't... I said stop it! Here's the one who's got problems. He's scared because he doesn't want to go back to the clinic. His problems are ours. The whole family's. I won't go to that house. I don't trust him. I do. He will do whatever is necessary to do. So, what about Tuesday? We'll be there Tuesday. Three years without seeing you. It was a mistake to let him out. Do you know what you are, my dearest darling? What? 
You're a stupid cunt. A stupid cunt who doesn't even know what to do with it. <laughs> and I'm an idiot. <laughs> Christ, I should have known. Known what? Your mother set you up as bait and I nibbled. It's true, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> you bastard! They're right about you. Oh? What did they say? <laughs> that you're, you're, you're a cruel, selfish, sadistic, mean, neurotic, psychotic bastard! <laughs> God, I must get away from here. Away from your sick mother and your crazy sisters. You're mad. Maybe. And you're not going anywhere. My mother won't let you. Believe me, but I've uh, prayed a lot for you and for your mother. I know you were the only one who tried to help her. Yes, well, she couldn't believe that the church forgave her while her family and friends did not. Often the worst enemies of the church are the hypocritical bigots and the phony Catholics and the phony mad and the phony sane and everything that's phony. What will you do now? Tell me, son. You wouldn't want to know. Hey, fellas, look at that bird, will you? <laughs> it's not flying away. It's not frightened. <laughs> you see that? A wild duck that hunters don't scare in the least. It's a little late to be around here, don't you think? <laughs> hey, I'm asking you, didn't they teach you to reply when you're spoken to? I guess maybe she can't talk. Wild ducks probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I wonder what's text, male or female? <laughs> Come on, fellas. Let her go. 
Your father could get upset. <laughs> and now the little donkey's frightened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've got to find out if it's male or female. Yeah, yeah. yeah we got to find out. That's enough. <laughs> oh, we're just having fun. Come on, let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Why, you little bitch. You're a tough one, aren't you? <laughs> Why aren't you happy? Happy? I think I am. How often do you need to have sex? You haven't done it with your husband for three weeks. What? What do you mean? You were brushing your hair. He came out of the bathroom, gargling, and told you, well, told you, very crudely what he wanted. How do you know all this? The day I repaired your TV, I hooked a microphone to your bed. Why? It was like having you in my arms. That... that wasn't nice. I know. I deserve to be punished. Would you like me to stay a week without eating? Or tear out my eyes? Yes. I'll tear out my eyes. Give him as a souvenir. Listen, take it easy. It was only a joke. Look, they're made of glass. She might freeze to death. Come on, we'll pick her up another day. I'm beginning to freeze, too. <laughs> you want to stay, Peter? We may get into trouble. the rope. Go ahead now. Well, we won't hurt you. I promise you.
Don't be afraid. Come over to the fire. I don't like this. Now. We started this together, friend. Go back out now. She'll live. They didn't do anything. Who did it? Soon I'll be going away forever. Promise me you won't do anything till then. Who were they? Who? Oh, uh, uh, look, about yesterday, uh, well, we weren't going to hurt the girl. It was just a joke, right? Well, well yes, I mean, we were just having a little fun. You know, we didn't mean anything, you understand. Uh, if you don't mind. We 
we bought her a new dress. So let's forget about it. I'm sure we can count on you. Of course. And we'll also forget about your wife. And me. What's that? What did you say? Nothing. It was just another joke. Ask her. I told her you would do this. And I was right. Thanks. <laughs> Look at that, what I got for last Christmas, Yule. <laughs> Some wonderful new plastic wrap. <laughs> I already have the, has the uh, blood stains on it. <laughs> I can think of a million different uses for this. Goes right into the back of the old hearse along with the uh, duct tape and machete. <laughs> well, my dear fiends. If you don't have anything to pass the time away with this winter, other than like, well, some of the, uh, maybe some lesser grim aspects than what I <laughs> enjoy doing, perhaps you'd like to bring out a game. Uh, but usually, you know, these games have, have uh, these giant boards that you have, have to have a big table to put it on. Well, this little nifty box called Campy Creatures comes with its everything that you need to play on a small table or without a table at all. In fact, it's so so pretty. I, it, it has uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon on it and a facsimile of vampire, or at least a vampiric uh, ghoul girl <laughs> on the front cover. And if you open it up, just partly like this, it looks like it's an actual wooden box. And of course, on the inside, we have a uh, Godzilla-type uh, creature, a spitting fire, a fire-breathing dragon with about six eyes. Anyway, such wonderful artwork that went into this. It also comes with a mad scientist handbook. And you get, basically, the object of the game is that you get these tiles uh, and uh, get, uh, cards and little figures to uh, 
Some are called campy creatures. These cards, these are locations. These are mortals. Of course, you have a board to play on it inside the box. That way, you don't have to worry about a giant table or anything. It's all compact. <laughs> what you... what? The object of the game is you're a mad scientist. I know it starts great already. And you send out your minions, your monsters, to capture the most perfect mortal there is. And you bring them back so you can we can experiment on them. <laughs> so that's part of the, the, the reasoning for the game. It's, it's lots of fun. And especially to pass these winter times and days and nights when you can't get outside. <laughs> so, my dear fiends, I hope you pick this up at your nearby monster store. And until then, let us go back to our feature of tonight. Hmm? <laughs> What's the matter? It's Tuesday, remember? Here we are. Yes, you invited us. Did you forget? Of course not. Come in. Mm. <laughs> Wonderful. Everything's the same. It's enough to have you committed. Why? Don't you love it? You think you're so superior. 
don't you? But you never explained why. Total waste of money. If it weren't for me, there wouldn't be a penny left of your mother's fortune. May I have your order? <laughs> I'll have a Bloody Mary. And you, miss? A uh, gin tonic. Dr. Queen Kiro called. He, um, you didn't report to him? What for? I'm not going back. Well, you're still on probation. Don't forget, John. The other day I was going through your accounts. The first of each month, you transfer 50,000 pesetas to the clinic from my account. Your, um, your treatment is very expensive, John. And 100,000 more to Dr. Queen Quiro personally. Why? What do you think? Perhaps so they could give me extra special treatment. If I'm declared insane, you'll have the money forever, won't you? Your mother trusted me, John, and she named me her executor. I'm not going to get angry with you, but you are being very silly. Why did you want us to come here? Come on. Let's have some fun. Today will be an important day for all of us. all those animals. I like animals. They're real. They eat when they're hungry. They sleep when they're tired. And they fuck when they're in heat. You've never been in heat, Aunt. It's enough! Did you hear it's enough? Let's go. Sit down! I'm not impressed by your vulgarity or by your tricks. I want to know why have you invited us? I wanted to see you, talk to you. Good, go ahead and talk. It all started five years ago, when I went to London. Yes, you were underage and you ran away without my consent. Did you practice free love? Yes. I want to start. But mother won't let me. Yet. <laughs> One thing I know. I hated my mother's money. I wanted to burn it and start all over. And I, as your guardian, stopped you. You do not burn money, you invest it. I was picked up in Hamburg and forced to come back. I wonder. When I used to smile, I remember my mother saying, when a child smiles, we forget he also has a future. I wanted to pick my own future. We heard all about it in the court hearings. Living with prostitutes, running around Europe with drug addicts, etc. Why must your way be the only way? You punished me too hard. You threw me to the lawyers, psychiatrists, and 
they pounded me. Crushed me. You were ill, John. And the judge and the doctors believed that you needed a few months rest. Treatment. Nobody wanted to punish you, John. And Marta, please, save me. I'll give up everything. The house, the money. I'll do whatever you say. Just give me one thing. What's that? Give me back my passport, and you'll never hear from me again. I swear it. I can't do it. Please. Let John go. I can't. If anything happens to him, then they would blame us. So everything has to be done legally. Okay, as you wish. Let's begin. Why did you always hate my mother? I didn't hate her. I hated her weakness and her immorality. I often go to the cliff. I'm thinking of planting some pine trees, and there isn't a single tree there. And she was so fond of them. What do you think? A very touching idea. John. Maria's going to get married soon. Please leave her alone. That still leaves Teresa and Esther for you. Leave your cousins alone, all three of them, please. Shh. Remember your heart. You look tired, are you? Hmm. Why don't you close your eyes and sleep like a good little girl? Would you like me to sing you a lullaby? That would be nice. It would be so wonderful. Why do you behave so strangely sometimes? I'm irresponsible. Didn't the doctor tell you? A real minister society. It's not surprising. Brought up without a father and your mother. May she rest in peace. She had her punishment. She killed herself. She cannot rest in peace. It was an accident, John.
What's the matter? I'm tired. Man is a strange animal. He has a conscience. You're so different now. Dr. Queen Kiro would change anyone. He destroys you slowly, like a worm inside your brain. And finally you realize there's only dust in your head. Dust. Caress me. Maria would do it better, wouldn't she? You sound like a woman now. <laughs> Why didn't you marry her? I wanted to show her the Taj Mahal, the temples of Luxor, the China Wall. But she didn't want to come with me. I would have. I'd like to go away with you. You don't think I'm... No. At least at first I wasn't. But now perhaps I am. I'd like to know. Are you all right? No, I'm not. Is this a new game? <laughs> in every tragedy, there's an innocent victim. In this case, you're it. What are you doing? I've got to do it. I I've got to do it. I hope nobody saw you come up. Where did you leave Mother? Dad, in the garden. Are you happy? I'm all right. You sure no one saw you come up? Wrong. Why? When did this war first begin? At first, I was sure I could stand it. But then, something began to go to pieces in my brain. And something else began to grow. Hatred! <laughs> painful. But when I accepted it, I felt better. Why do you talk like that? Where's my mother? I told you, Dad. She's dead. If there's none of you here, there'll be no case. And you're not going to be anywhere. I'm irresponsible. That's what your doctors have said. I don't know the difference between right and wrong. And you know why. There is no difference. There are only rules. Ha, ha, ha! 
If you think you're scaring me, you're wasting your time. I know you're there. We were all free then. The past didn't exist, and the future wasn't a threat. We weren't trapped in the web. Trapped? How? Where's Mother? Asleep. And your sisters. You and I are the only ones awake. I want you to know one thing. I don't trust you. I know you're capable of anything. Aunt Martha and you have made your plans, and I have made mine. I really believe you're sick. I'm mad. I can get you put away again. I'll even lie if I have to. You already lied once. Told them I tried to rape you. Don't touch me! Don't touch me! Let me go! It's too late Let me now! Go. It's too late for all of us! <laughs>
after death, what happens to the skin, to the eyes, to the soft, silky hair? Everything rots and disappears. Your bodies will turn into sap, and in spring, the sap will rise up the pine trunks. In a few years, I'll come back to the cliff, and I'll think, those leaves are perhaps Teresa's fingers, and those others her cheeks and her lips. You'll always be facing the sea, and the wind will caress you for centuries and centuries. did you tell my husband? What kind of a bet did you and I make? When? I'm sorry. It was a joke. You like to play jokes, don't you? I love it. And the thing about us, was that also a joke? I would have loved to have done it. But not with you unconscious. Not that way. When he comes back, pretend you're trying to escape. I'll kill him myself. I won't let you! He's completely crazy. Can't you see? It's his life or ours. I want out! I want out! I want out! Shut up! You idiot! Tell him to come and see me tomorrow night at 12 o'clock. I'll apologize to him, if that'll make you happy. Now, please go. You... You shouldn't be here. Please go.
We've installed a new church bell. It weighs two tons. And? It'll be rung for the first time tomorrow. To operate it requires a system of counterweights. And you, you'll be one of the counterweights. What will you tell them? That I ran away? In the end, I couldn't hurt you. First peal of the bell, you will hang. I only want to know one thing. Was I really insane, or was it Dr. Quinquiro? I must know. Who was right? You? Are you right? A malignant tumor has to be cut out. I could not sleep as long as you were alive. You've won. You've always won. May you all sleep in peace. The last two bricks. Who are you? The one who gets the last laugh. <laughs> now, don't you think that's funny? You... you may leave here. But I promise you, I'll have the last laugh. We live in troubled times. Wars, revolutions, civil disturbances, the wanton killing in many lands of innocent men, women, and children for base political ends. Yet, in our darkest hours, there can still be heard by those who choose to listen the voice of our maker. God speaks to us every moment of the day and of the night. And in these dark times, we need to hear him more than ever. I thank all those who have made their contributions so that this church may have this new bell, which will carry the voice of our Lord to more distant places, which will command the attention of all those who do not wish to listen to it. God bless you all. In nobile patri et fili et spiritu santi. Amen.
Esther. I'm leaving. I won't go into that house again. Why not? You killed him. We did something terrible. But it was necessary. Goodbye. Esther? You are underage. I can force you to obey me. If you do, I'll tell everything, Mother. I'll scream it to the whole world. I'm exhausted. Let's go. Getting foggy again. Are you going to see him? Who? You know perfectly well who. He wants to give you an explanation. No, it won't be necessary. I think our neighbors finally left us alone. Why? Well, he's gone away, abroad. He didn't tell me that. I don't want his name mentioned again. Say he'd gone away. Right in. Over here. No, here. Waiting. Hmm. 
This way. Come on. What do you want? What do you want from me? Oh, my 
evilness, Boris. What a film. What a film to start the season off right with. Strangeness, indeed. <laughs> I thought there for a moment that aunt was going to be the bee's knees. <laughs> well, they sure knew how to ring in the new fear, didn't they? With that rope around that the guy's neck and inside the bell tower and all that. <laughs> And he, of course, he did get the last laugh, didn't he? <laughs> he was such a prankster, that fellow. He would have made a good denizen of Halloween Town, I think, to some degree. Well, some degree. <laughs> well, my dear fiends, I hoped that we kicked off the new season in the new year with a bang and a chill and a thrill. And we hope that you'll come back next time for another one and yet another one and yet another one we're going to pry into the vaults here at gargoyle manor the monster museum and see what we can find right boris well boris is going to dig into it <laughs> indeed he is well my dear fiends until next time as always <laughs> keep screaming <laughs>